you know, some of the newer, more expensive cars have a system that lets the driver know there's something in his way when he's backing up. <laughs> I guess real wealth means never having to look in your rear view mirror. My level of wealth means not even having a rear view mirror. <laughs> But I figure, hey, what the heck? I can at least act wealthy. to get a new bar in town because right now we just have the one the broken spirit <laughs> there's no competition right so they've got a real attitude down get this they won't serve you unless you can pay <laughs> Uncle Red, yeah. Uncle Red. This, is so great. <laughs> this is so great the bar's in town the bar's in town what bar's in town yeah wow. yeah you know, you know what it's called what? the go-go bar <laughs> the sound of that, Harold, eh? You think Bernice will let me go? Well, you don't go to it. What? No, you eat it. What? It's an energy bar. <laughs> Bubble bar. Yeah. And they've asked me to do the marketing in this area. <laughs> Google bar. Google bar. Google bar. Go, go away, Harold, all right? Harold, oh, oh, oh. you got to hook us up. get us as many as you can spare. Yeah. I haven't felt this great my whole life. <laughs> you know, usually the sewage business just sucks the energy right out of me. <laughs> well, there's a delivery coming this afternoon. I have them sent right over to your places. Okay. Great. Uh oh, send them to the store. Don't send them to my home. Because if Anne-Marie spends the day eating energy bars, by bedtime, I'm a dead man. <laughs> Not a bad way to go, though, dog. <laughs> <laughs> You guys even know what's in these things? Well, they're all natural, Red. Mm. Oh, yeah, they got uh, electrolytes for energy, mm -hmm. uh, ginseng for, uh, oh. Uh, memory. Memory. And, uh, and, and ginger root for general health. Hey, hey, I could be their mascot. All hail general health. Oh, well, yeah? You look more like Major Doofus. <laughs> winner receives this exciting breath mint gun. It's perfect for party guests with halitosis. Just get them laughing, then nail them with a candy right between the tonsils. Okay, Ed, cover your ears. Red, you have 30 seconds to get Ed Frit to say this word. Pride. Pride. Yeah, all right, mister. And go. Okay, Ed, you know this one. Uh, what do you call a group of lions? Trouble. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. This is something that a man has that should never be taken away from him. His leg. <laughs> no. Um, okay, Ed, you're an effective animal control officer, so this brings you a lot of... Medical attention. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay, you know what? This is something that every person should have. Ooh, an escape route. Okay, okay, you've heard a man say, I may not have a lot of money, but at least I've got my own teeth. <laughs> Almost out of time, Red. Yeah, okay. Okay, Ed, what comes before a fall? Stepping on a rat. Stepping on a rat? Look, it happened, okay? I don't take any pride in it. There you go. <laughs> Oh, hi, everybody. Ranger Gord here with another one of my critically acclaimed animated shorts. I know what you're asking yourself. Which critic gave me the acclaim? Huh? <laughs> oh, well, sorry, folks. I didn't realize this was Let's Call Gord's Bluff Night. So I made it up, big deal. It's called hype. Those Hollywood big shots do it all the time. Oh, yeah. 
But when Gord does it, old buddy Gord, no, you gotta cut him down to size, don't you? <laughs> Anyway, this one's called All About the Northern Lights. So sit back and enjoy. <laughs> Here we go. everyone, today I'm going to teach everyone alive about the miracle of the Northern Lights, also known as the Aurora Borealis. Isn't that interesting? Actually, you're starting to Borealis already. <laughs> a small joke from a small man. Amusingly, ancient peoples came up with all kinds of ridiculous explanations for the lights, thinking them animal spirits or an omen of the war. Of course, now we all know the real cause. Oh. Electrons from the solar winds interacting with the Earth's magnetic field? Uh -huh. Very naive, Harold. No, the lights are actually the spirit of Aurora, Greek goddess of the dawn reaching across the heavens to communicate with her one true love, me. Look, there she is now! To the horizon line! <laughs> Oh, false alarm, it's just an out-of-control bonfire. Come on, let's go. Oh, maybe you should put it out, Court. Do I tell you how to do your job, Harold? Now well, you're in luck. Rain's taking care of it. Yes, but with these low-lying storm clouds, we'll never see Aurora. Here, you two climb this surprisingly tall tree and take a picture of her to show everyone. Oh, well, she's your true love, Gordon. Why don't um, you do it, huh? Clearly, you know nothing about women, Harold. I'm playing hard to get. Come on, let's do it. Well, that was fast. Let's see the photo. Oh, I think my fillings have melted. Oh. Hang on, storm's clearing. Oh, forget it, Gord. We can't see the lights, and even if we could, it's just a bunch of charged particles in the atmosphere. It's not a goddess. Oh, really, Red? And what do you call that? Gordon, I've missed you. Well, I missed you too, Aurora. Why haven't you called? Well, gee, baby, you know, this is my busy time of year. Uh... Oh, I can't believe we ever doubted him. Well, truly, we are the fools. That's right. Thanks for showing up, dollface. You really know how to light up a room, huh? <laughs> We've all seen these picket fences that people think are quaint and rustic and give a sense of easy living in a relaxed rural environment. But let's not forget the main purpose of a fence is to keep something in or something out or both. So this time on Handyman Corner, I'm going to show you how to turn your picket fence into a billboard that'll send a clear message to your neighbors and the world in general. First thing you want to do is take the pickets off there. All you need for that is a hammer. And maybe some wood glue. Okay, I, I know I said wood glue, but you knew I was kidding. Now you want to remount all your pickets on there using just one six inch spike in each one and just held in one place so the picket can kind of pivot from there. And yeah, you can use a smaller nail if you want to. I prefer the bigger target, but hey, it's your thumb. Okay, I got all my pickets mounted on there and then I've attached fishing line to each one. That's how I control. By the way, these are wooden pickets. They're not Wilson pickets. <laughs> Good God, you <laughs> Ow. These fishing lines are all attached to my billboard control panel. This is where all the thinking came in. That took a while. Each line is attached to a ring here. And when I want to form a certain letter, I just pull that ring down to the peg across from that letter, and that turns my picket fence into a billboard. For example, let's say you got some new neighbors moving in next door, and you want to use your fence to say hello. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, but then maybe after they've lived there for a little while, you find out they like to fool around with firearms in the backyard. Well, that requires a change of signs. These are really not your kind of people. Don't sit on the fence. Let them know. <laughs> and it's just that easy. So remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs> Talk to all you dads out there who say stuff to your kids like, shoot for the stars or strive to be number one. Oh, I know all you're trying to do is pour gasoline onto the soggy kindling of adolescent ambition. <laughs> but are you helping the kid or are you just setting them up for a lifetime of disappointment? Because <laughs> to have a real good life depends more on geometry than it does on ambition. See, success to me is, is kind of like a pyramid. It's, it's like your own body shape. Kind of got the tiny point at the top and real wide at the bottom, you know? <laughs> and you don't want to get too many people up there because it, well, it just doesn't work. And it's too much like a government. <laughs> and ask yourself this question. Do you want your kid to behave the way the guys at the top do? I didn't think so. Instead, give them the same advice that made you the man you are today. Shoot for the middle. <laughs> I'm telling you, for most of us, the middle is where you want to be. Because in life, the odd time you stumble now and then, and if you're in the middle, no matter which way you fall, you got somebody to land on. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Sometimes in life, things start to look grim. Your septics get filled to well past their brim. So call me right now and I'll give them a skim before a walk on the lawn turns into a swim. Well, boy, I have to admit, I've turned right around in this whole energy bar thing. I've been eating the Hemel's Go-Go bars here and they got a real kick to them, I think. <laughs> I'm more alert, I'm getting more stuff done. I even listen to people when they're talking to me now. <laughs> and I've stopped snoring. Actually, stopped sleeping altogether. <laughs> Uncle Red, have you got a minute? Well, let me just check my day timer. Day you have a day timer? Yeah, I'm a busy guy, Harold. We're making a lot of changes to the lodge, okay? Okay, all right. How are you next July? Say, say the 23rd around 3.15? Good, yeah, fine. All right, I'll put you down for 3.15. I'll have my people set it up, okay? People got people yeah. now. Here they are now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, Want to meet with Harold next July 23rd, 3.15? We'll give him 10 minutes, okay? Right. All right, what do you got for me? Okay, did the market analysis on the large property yep. and the condo development looks like the way to go? Have you lost your mind? Exactly, listen to Dalton here. The commercial sector is where it's at. I say we turn this dump into a mini mall. No, no, no. How about this, guys? We put a condo development on top of a mini mall. Uh, Ka-ching! Ka <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. Look, let's meet tonight on this, okay? How about 3 a.m.? That way we can check the Canadian dollar when the London market's open. All right, sure. Good. I'm going to need some more go-go bars. Yes, oh, me yeah. too. Yeah, me oh, too. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. You guys better cut way back on the go-go bars. <laughs> Come oh, on. No way. You got to keep those go-go bars coming here. I don't have any. What? Me? That's bad. Bad. So, well, I, mean, just, I don't have any. It was just a test. That's all they sent me. Can't you see what's happening here? You guys are addicted to the go-go bars. No, no, no. no, 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 no well, I hope so, because there are no more go-go bars. Fine. Well, that's cool. That's, that's all right. That's fine. That's fine. I'm good. 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 I'm
We have an area out behind the lodge. Seems to collect a lot of garbage for some reason. Once in a while, we got to clean her all up. So Walter and I were back there just trying to get her cleaned up a little bit. And we had no idea really where the where the garbage. Now uh, Dalton had come by on his way to the dump in a in a pickup truck, and uh, apparently there's a pothole there, and we didn't see it, but. You know, this may be where the guard, well, of course, we didn't see it come along, but uh, we just kind of ignored that and carry on. And uh, but Walter noticed that the board there had a, had a nail in it, and he thought, you know, this might, might come in handy for picking up papers and what have you. So we tried it, just uh, just tried one. And that really thought, well, you know, he could probably pick up uh, four or five or six more uh, all on the one go. So that's, that's kind of smart thinking. Meanwhile, I'm not paying a whole lot of attention to what he's doing. I'm just picking up garbage and putting it into the bag. And then he comes over with the thing and now wants me to hold the bag for him. He's going to, okay, no, that's fine. That's fine. All right. Just do it. Just do it, Walter. All right. Good. And then he couldn't get the, uh, he couldn't actually get the stick back out of the thing. And he couldn't, he couldn't figure out, uh, you know, why it wouldn't come out. So I had to, I had to point out to him where, where actually the problem was coming from. And I had a pretty good idea where it was. And then, oh boy. Oh boy. You know, it's, like so much of the hotter food, it's not the hello, but the goodbye, you remember? So uh, we just kept on uh, cleaning up. Now Dalton comes back the other way, and this time he's got a garbage can, and uh, this time it was Walter's turn to have a little fun. Uh, and you know, it's a funny thing. I, I heard about somebody on the airplane had a problem with kind of an airtight fit, and this is the same thing Walter was going through. There's kind of a suction going on there, and uh, can't get it off, so he comes over to me for help. And I, I, had, I had noticed on the first load of garbage that came in there, there was some uh, jumper cables. And so I thought maybe that's uh, one handle's positive, the other handle negative. And then uh, over to, I think the battery still had a little bit of, you don't need a lot of juice to, to blow a garbage can off a guy's hindquarters uh, usually. And uh, okay, there she goes. Yeah. So that, that worked well. So meanwhile, Dalton has got a two by four, and a hubcap comes right off his wheel. Well, the two, the two by well, it's more of a, because that was more of a two by ten. But when the hubcap hit, suddenly realized this garbage was coming from the road, and I noticed it's Dalton's pickup. That's where all the garbage is coming from. So now I got an idea, and I'm dangerous when I got an idea. So we cleaned up the whole area, got her all into one garbage bag, got that into the garbage can, and I told Walter put that on the end of the two by ten, and then we'll each grab an end. <laughs> We'll take her over the road, and what I was going to do is just put my end of the plank right over the actual pothole, and just kind of stand back and uh, wait, see what happens. What we'll do is we'll get Dalton to take his own garbage back. And to make sure it never happens again, I use the hubcap to fill the pothole. Notice with these small barbecues that when you run the flame wide open for a while, the propane tank gets all frosty? I'm sure there's a scientific explanation for that, but who cares? The main issue is how can we use that situation to make our lives better? So let's say you're going to make yourself a hamburger and you'd like to have a cold drink to go with it. It can be any kind of drink you want, as long as it has the plastic harness holding all the cans together. The fermentation is optional. Make a slit in the plastic right up the middle, and you can slide the whole unit over the frosty part of the propane cylinder. Just put your burger on there first. Okay, you want to make sure every can is touching, and you got yourself an instant cooler. Now you just leave her set on high, and by the time the burger is hot and tasty, the drinks will be cold and frosty. <laughs> go-go bars, so we're back to having no energy, which means nothing's going to change around here. <laughs> which is actually the only appeal to the whole Possum Lake area when you think about it. A lot of the guys had trouble quitting the go-go bars cold turkey, but not me. See, the difference is I've got a strong mind. Well, I, 
Got a pretty strong mind. <laughs> well, I've got a mind. <laughs> Well, that's it, Uncle Red. The test is over. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> so, what'd you do with those extra go-go bars I found? I threw them all into Mercury Creek, Harold. Oh, see, now that's water pollution. Not in Mercury Creek. <laughs> I mean, it can handle a few energy bars. I've seen it dissolve a snowmobile. <laughs> Well, either way, I phoned the company, I told them their product is dangerous. Yeah. And the list of ingredients was misleading. May contain caffeine? It was pure caffeine! Really? What? You got Go Go Bar! Well, no, you got Go Go Bar! Hold on, this is just the one from the original batch that you gave me, Harold. There's no ingredient listing on there. What? Oh, no, no, no! No, none of the ones we gave you. No, no. What? This is just a placebo. Yeah, there's nothing in here but like water and flour and some flavoring. <laughs> yeah. Yours were all fake. <laughs> You mean all those changes in me with just my brain at work, Harold? Huh? Hey? See how strong my mind is? Huh? <laughs> oh, meeting time! Yeah, you go ahead, Harold. I'll be right down. So if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. Maybe you should wait up. <laughs> Keep your stick on the ice. All right. One to one, the flunkers for a tie. Sit down. All right, men, uh, bow your heads for the man's prayer. I'm a man, man. but I, I can change. change. If, if I, I have, have to, to, I guess. <laughs> okay, man, apparently Winston has some kind of a public service announcement. Yeah, uh, guys, you're gonna have to be careful when you're fishing in Mercury Creek. Uh, with all the go-go bars in there, uh, fish are gonna be a little more twitchy for a while. <laughs>